everyone. Uh, my name is Marissa Brooks. I am the head of Pills Content and Communication for Video Content. And today I am speaking with Tola. We will be talking about fellowship, everything fellowship, and uh, a little bit of conversation of what fellowship is versus a residency. So Tola, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, Marissa. I'm currently the director for the industry side of the Pills Protégé program. And I'm also an, a starting, or I won't say incoming anymore, but starting Santa Fe Fellow alongside with the Rutgers um, Fellowship Program. So thank you for having me. Of course, and congratulations. That's so exciting. <laughs> awesome. So to get started, can you just tell us like, what is a pharmaceutical industry fellowship? I know there's not a lot of people who are aware of that. I would just love to hear like, what is that? So a pharmaceutical fellowship is a postdoc. Um, it's a postdoctoral fellowship that is done after pharmacy school, a little similar to residency. The difference here is more um, gearing, you towards, gearing you towards the pharmaceutical industry um, sector, trying to make sure that you have the professional skills, developing you in that aspect, because those are the things and skills that you really don't gain in pharmacy school. The pure difference between fellowship and residency is like there's not really a bounding contract. Um, so people who do get fellowships, uh, you have the option to kind of get matriculate into a job opportunity, either after the fellowship or in the middle of that fellowship. Um, it's, it's truly a, an experience to um, take the opportunity to kind of gain as much professional experience as much as possible in many, either in a particular functional area or many different functional areas. So that's just the fellowship in a, in a big, bigger picture. Okay, awesome. And I know there's different types of fellowships. Like what do those look like? Can you explain those a little bit? Yeah, there are one-year fellowships and then there's two-year fellowships. Um, there's also different functional areas. Uh, so there's the big three. So I'm gonna name just the three and then there's subgroups under those. So there's medical affairs and then there's regulatory affairs and HEOR. Now we do have things like MSL that kind of fall under, that's a medical science liaison that fall under that medical affairs aspect. Um, pharmacovigilance, they fall under that regulatory affairs aspect. So um, those are the different kinds of fellowships just in a broader spectrum, but there's definitely subtitles or sub um, fellowships underneath that kind of relate to those particular uh, major sorry, functional areas, but they all relate and they all come together to have one purpose and that's to help a population of people. So that's a good awesome. difference there. That's awesome. Thank you. I know it can be kind of confusing to like navigate that area. So that's a question I hear a lot from students. Um, and do you have to complete an industry rotation or an externship to get a fellowship? I get this question a lot. Every, <laughs> almost every protege has asked or external uh, proteges or mentees and up, up and coming P3s, P4s. No, you do not. Um, you absolutely just have to have skill sets that you can acquire from your app your rotations. I will take me, for example, I had all clinical. I come from a very heavily clinical background a pharmaceutical uh, pharmacy sorry not pharmaceutical but pharmacy school and um it was very difficult for me i thought that i wouldn't be able to get this opportunity but there's a lot of transferable skills that you can gain from your app your rotations and draw from those skills and highlight those things on your cv that you can translate into the industry there's a lot of people who go from straight from um, community straight to the industry so it is completely fine you do not have to now it'll help you it won't hurt you so it'll be great do you have any advice for someone who isn't able to get any type of industry experience prior to a fellowship and like what they can do to like make themselves a competitive candidate? Absolutely. I would tell um, these particular individuals to seek projects, um, look into the functional areas that you're interested in, look into medical affairs, look into regulatory affairs. Now, I may not be uh, specific, like functional areas specific, like MSLs or pharmacovigilance, but um, doing a monograph alone can speak to regulatory affairs. You can talk about it. Um, being a part of a PNT committee, that's something that you can also contribute and talk about uh, making, not only making monographs, but presenting, doing presentations, MSLs do that. Um, being a part of data analytics or just overall patient care and medication reviews, HEOR can speak to that. So these are just some of the things that you can kind of discuss and do or projects that you can speak towards during your interviews and on your CV. So this is just some, just to name a few. Awesome. And can you explain a little bit about what the application and interview process looks like? 
So each fellowship is different. Uh, it depends on whether that fellowship is connected with a university, so a pharmacy, a pharmacy school, a pharmacy school, or a pharmacy school related university, or if that fellowship is a standalone. So we do have uh, fellowships that are in conjunction: Rutgers, MCPHS, and Northeastern Northwestern, and they are all connected with far bigger, larger. I call we call them big pharma, so larger pharmaceutical companies. And these are fellowships that you would have to go through through your application process, a very rigorous and intense interview process. Process. And these interviews can be conducted of one to, I think it's between three and four interviews. So usually there's a, there's a reception in between. So you go to round one, usually around one interviews are fellows, uh, first year fellows, and then round two will be your second year fellows and possibly um, your first year fellows involved. Then your third rounds are usually directors, executive directors, VPs. Um, preceptors that will be precepting you because they want to get a scope of you and see if they would like that particular student. And then they would have a reception, hopefully, you know, being the fact that you move forward, there will be a reception after that. And that reception is just, it's really casual. I feel like a lot of people take that reception uh, very seriously, but it's very casual. All you're doing is having a conversation and just, they just want to get to know you personally, be personable. Um, and then after that, then you, the decision is usually made around that November, December time period. Now there is also fellowships that are called standalones, meaning they do not coordinate themselves with a pharmaceutical pharmacy school. They're, they're standalones. FDA, they're considered a, so the O-RISE fellowship, they're considered standalones. We have the ASHP fellowship. Um, they're also considered standalones. They're not in conjunction with the with a pharmacy pharmacy school at all, they're a, it's just the ASHP one year fellowship. So those those are just examples of all kinds of fellowships. But how the process goes is very similar one two and three, and some of them is just one and two depending on what that fellowship decides. Awesome, sounds good. And then I guess a bonus question: uh, what what does a day in the life of a fellow look like for you? I know you just started, so just kind of like what's been your experience so far. Oh, love this question. I'm getting this question often. It's about that time, huh? Um, yes. So, <laughs> so yes, uh, day in a life for me, I do um, make sure that I get all the work that I need to get done between seven to three o'clock. Uh, I feel as though that if the earlier, the better. Um, so I guess I wake up in the morning, uh, go to the gym, come back. <laughs> then I go ahead and hit the ground running with a lot of research papers that I do have to read over. Um, trying to collect as much data as much as I can from it. So my fellowship is patient value and strategy. And in that particular fellowship, I'm basically analyzing, taking as much insight from a patient as possible. I mean, I'm getting their perspective, the population, the epidemiology from so many different sources and combining all those things together. So I'm reading a lot of papers, I'm reading a lot of articles and making sure that I get the proper insight to be able to create targets for the company and I'll, I'll hopefully gain those have those targets um, in minority areas and unmet needs, you know, in many different areas that we want to kind of address. So that's what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, usually after meetings in your first year are alive, they're gonna be heavy. Um, one-on-ones, I still have one-on-ones now because my, again, my fellowship is is pretty in the middle between HUR and, and regulatory affairs and market access. So it's a bit of everything. Um, so I do have one-on-ones because I don't know the career path in particular I would like to go, go to because it's not a specific fellowship, but um, I do have one-on-ones with many different people in the sector. This is a networking opportunity for me too. So mm -hmm. anybody that I see at meetings, I'm automatically sending up, uh, sending them emails or a LinkedIn message and making sure that I interact with them and uh, network. And uh, hopefully eventually just is the goal to get a job afterwards. That's everybody's goal. But, you know, to land a position, whether with the company that you're already having a fellowship with, which is usually what they would want, you know, they don't want to let you go or just landing something else outside the company as well. So that's my day-to-day -day life. It's not, it's pretty uh, intense right now, but I feel like that's with all fellows. I would think we could all relate. Uh, the curve, the learning curve from pharmacy school as a student to a fellow is huge. And I, and it's, it is a, a completely aspect they want you, the, the autonomy is up to you. So it's a, it's a, you have a lot of autonomy in your own lifestyle and things that you would like to invest in your career. So that's about it for me. That sounds wonderful. I can't wait to see what all you do in your career and I'm wishing you the best of luck. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for talking with us today. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks.